Welcome back to the show. My name is Essen Reza, your podcast host. Today, I've got a very, very special guest on the show. This man needs no introduction. He is Jas Takar. I'll give a quick intro on Jas. Jas is a renowned uh, guest and a well-known, respected uh, broker in the GTA real estate circle. He's leads one of the top teams in real estate in the nation. And he's a real estate broker, an investor, sales strategist, podcast host, a mentor. The list goes on and on. But Jas, one of the best things I like about you is that you're a humble guy, genuine, and you always believe in collaboration, not competition. And also want to give feedback to those peers like myself in the industry, which really means a lot. So thank you for coming on the show. I really mm-hmm. appreciate it. I appreciate it, thank brother. You, Thanks for yeah. having me. You know, um, it's funny. Every time I turn on my phone right now, Essen, I can't get away from you, brother. So I don't know what you're doing in terms of content, <laughs> what kind of steroids you're on when it comes to content. I appreciate but, that. I appreciate you, you that. Know, as a fellow content creator as well, um, I got to give you a lot of flowers and kudos, man, because I know how tough it is to put yourself out there um, uh, and then consistently do it, come up with ideas and all that. And like, even host uh, host a podcast again uh, uh, it's huge because I think the community needs it more and, and, and not only our real estate community but like the community at large I don't think there's enough people who uh, who are actually putting out educational content and and you're doing a great job but again at the end of the day I think it's more important for the viewers and the listeners to put their comments and engage yeah. with you and tell you probably what they want to hear more of or hear less of maybe they didn't like the crazy <laughs> Indian guy and I'm talking about myself today um that 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 is going to come with a lot of energy and all that but they got to let you know and so uh again man big kudos to you brother thank you i really appreciate that man that that means a lot for those of you guys who don't know i met jas about maybe a year and a half ago i think no it's been that long eh? it's been a year and a no, half and quick. um he does a lot of work on social media content you probably heard his name already by now but we met and for some reason i don't know what it was i was like i want to meet this guy in person and literally six months to the date i think i signed up for a webinar you called me personally and said, come to the office for half an hour. I came in. I don't know what you were going to say. But I was like, whatever this guy's selling, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> That's right. And, and, I, and I bought in. So we'll talk about some of the stuff that you're doing on the immersion and program, what awesome. you're doing on that as well. Yeah. But before we get to the, you know, let's talk about your comic book origin story, how you like to say, and how did you get started in the industry and what's kept you in the, in the industry for this long? Um, so, for, you know, first and foremost, I, um, when I, when I started in sales back, like I was at, I wasn't uh, 12 years old with newspapers. So I was still that kid, even at six and seven that would put up his hand and help with the book sale and, 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 and selling Christmas ornaments kind of door to door. So I already, I, I always had that 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 knack to to meet people, right? Um, but at the age of twelve, I thought I was going to sell newspapers for the rest of my life because I was like, "This is so cool! I get to meet people and get paid for it." Then I went into shoe sales, I went into banking, and I was in car sales for about three years at the age of about eighteen to twenty one, and that's when I started to feel this void, like, okay. I, I've worked up the ladder of sales and service, but there's something missing. And I think it was the fact that real estate was something I wanted to invest into because I met this guy in uh, like right in my neighborhood. So I'm shoveling the snow of three of three houses. I was like, look, is this guy the, 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 the landscaper or the snowplow kind of guy? But then got to talking to him. He told me he owned the properties, rented them out. You know, as, as a 21 year old, I was like, that's pretty cool. Like you rent these. And so I started to learn a little bit about that and thinking that, well, there's this one last rung on the ladder of sales that I haven't, I haven't conquered. I mean, that's for lack of a better word. Like that's really what I wanted to do. Got my license and uh, got my license when I was 23, uh, 41 now. So I'm coming up to 19 years or whatever it is. Um, and I love this business, man. I get to help people create wealth. I kind of sway to working with more investors nowadays. Um, but I have a team of 60 agents. Um, I get to help other agents. And then that started to not fulfill me as much though. Not like in terms of of just helping investors and helping the agents in my circle. That's where I wanted to kind of reach out to more people. Sales is all I've ever done. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe a couple of months here and there at a banquet hall and 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 some other jobs, but I know this industry so well. Not not only the real estate industry, but the sales and service industry that I kind of figured out the science of achievement now. Like, I know I can put some work into something and I can make money. Like, I kind of understand that. I can understand, okay, whatever's left over. I'm not a big spender on stuff. Not to say that like buying expensive stuff, there's anything wrong with it. I'm just not that guy. I'm now in the, I think the best way to say this is that I'm in a, a, a phase of my life where it's about like fulfillment, like the art. There's more of an art there, right? Like what actually makes me happy? What keeps me up at night? What gets me up in the morning? And I found is that when I'm giving, when you can 
Like if you really want to get uber, uber wealthy, what I've come to learn while I've been uh, uh, learning from other successful people is help others get what they want and then you'll have more of whatever you want in your life. But the first thing is that you got to help other people. Right. And so that's kind of where I'm at my phase now, yeah. man, in my life. Like I like, you know, we were talking like for whatever it was, 47 seconds off here before yeah. we started this and your face is lighting up with these thoughts and ideas I'm giving you. And some of them are like, if not all of them are, are, are based on experience and results. But now it's, it's, that's, that's one thing, like watching your face light up with you. It's different because I actually see you execute and you're getting results. We were talking about like, you have these events, these educational events you're putting on for your clients and like your, your, your friends, your families, your, like their colleagues, your neighbors, they need to come and check this stuff out because you're putting all this stuff on for free. Last time I checked, like you're right. not charging anybody for any of these events, not, right. like, and you're educating them. Now, if somebody comes to your event, like, and you don't tie them to the chair that, that they have to buy or sell or invest with you, right. but chances are they're going to probably do business with you. Right. And so watching those results happen for you, man, I got to tell you, like, I don't like, I'm not going to lie and say, I don't like the commission that I make when somebody buys a piece of real estate with me, but it pales in comparison when I watch you getting results. Yeah. Cause I know what's going to happen. I have this success table of elements. It's 13 elements of success that myself and my team put together. And you know, a lot of it probably has to do with, because I, I didn't understand the periodic table of elements when <laughs> in school. Uh, I can't spell half the words I'm going to be saying to you today, Essen. Um, but this, the, the top element of success is LDL. They're all acronyms. LDL stands for leaders develop leaders. Right. And I just can't wait to watch you now in a year, two years, seven years, whenever that time is, when you're talking to somebody and, and educating them on how to get out there, build a personal yeah. brand, put on, like, I know that's the next evolution. Cause I know kind of how you roll now. I've spent enough time with you. Somebody gave me that it's my turn to kind of pay it forward. Yeah. No, it's all about consistency. Like you said, right. Consistency, you know, executing on, on a high level. It's and undefeated even, by the way. Yeah. Consistency yeah, is undefeated, undefeated man. Anybody yeah. who's consistent at something, yeah. they're going to win. Sorry. Absolutely. Absolutely. So actually you spoke about you know, being wealthy, that was one of the points you made out. And um, a large portion of my audience is actually in their 20s and early 30s. And the question I get a lot from these people is that, you know, we're priced out. Um, we can't afford to buy a property in the GT, even if it's an investment property. But I always believe where there's a will, there's a way. So one of the themes I want to focus on is what do you think is the right mindset of a savvy investor? And what can somebody in their 20s do right now practically to get into the investment portfolio, whether it's real estate or whatever, but real estate is what we're talking about, but this is a hurdle that they face. What do you advise for the younger guys and girls? Well, well first and foremost, I think I always like to say to people that I don't believe like real estate's necessarily the best investment. Right. I think it's one of, one of the, the best investments. Yeah. Yeah. By far, I can tell everyone what, I truly believe to be the best investment. Yeah. It's not crypto, it's not stocks, it's not business, it's not even real estate. It's the investment in yourself. You will get the biggest ROI, return on your investment, when you actually take the time to educate yourself, okay? Now, after that, you have to make the decision, in my opinion, again, what type of vehicle are you gonna use? Real estate, truly is one of the best vehicles. Right. Why? Because there's so many options for you to get in. Even as somebody who's 20 to 30, okay, you have a myriad of options. Number one, and not in any particular order, but here's a couple. Now, what I think happens before I kind of go into it, what happens for a lot of younger people is, and it actually happens with people, you know, <clears throat> Some of my client base is in their older 60s and 70s. So they still go through what I call the investor objects, shine, uh, uh, investor shiny object right. syndrome, right? I like to invest in this. I want to invest into this strategy, this strategy. This. They all look amazing. Right. And then they take action on zero. Yeah. Okay. So I hope that doesn't happen to everyone here because knowledge is, knowledge is only potential power. It's not real no. power. The actual use of knowledge is power. So I hope people actually execute on one of these if you're in that 20 to 30 range. So if you're 20 to 30, here's a couple of options in the greater Toronto area. Number one is I would look at what, 
the kids nowadays, they call it house hacking. Right. We kind of a little bit older, I think I'm slightly <laughs> older than you are as well. Um, definitely my parents' generation. Right. All that, like that was just normal way to buy real estate, which is you buy a home that has a basement, yeah. apartment, a main floor, and maybe look at a property that has three units, but you live in one of them. Right. Okay, you live in one of them, preferably the basement, the upstairs, the main floor, it might not even cover all your costs with the cost of borrowing like today at the time of this recording, kind of early uh, 2023, but it will cover majority of your costs, okay? But you have to be able to stomach that. Yeah. Meaning you're not living in the Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the whole social media realm where you need to impress people. And unfortunately, most people are trying to impress people that they don't even care about, mm -hmm. but that's not what, like you have to be able to stomach, like, hey, okay, I'm gonna be okay with living in the basement. Maybe my friends are gonna know I'm in a basement. Like you gotta get over that, right? Rent out the upstairs. So that's one way. Again, it's just simple, basic house hacking. Number two, I think is a great way to get into the market is through a pre-construction investment. Right. Why? Because when you're 20 and when you're 30, not all of them, so I'm not painting everybody with the same brush, but generally speaking, you could get swayed to buy dumb shit. Right. I need a better car. I need to go on better vacations. I I need I need I need those kicks. I need better swag. Whatever it is, what a pre-construction condo does is that it forces you to save, in its nature of the investment. Why? Because if you're buying, call it a six hundred thousand dollar condo in the GTA, you have to put down twenty percent as an investor. So it's one hundred twenty thousand dollars. That has to be put though down in installments over a three year period. Right. So generally speaking, the first 5% is due in 30 days. So 5% of 600,000, it's 30,000. You gotta find a way to come up with 30,000, okay? Then your next installment might not be, sometimes it's six months down the road, but there's projects out there and, 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 and opportunities that I know you work with that you'll find your clients that where it's 5% in a year. So now you have to put down another 30,000, but it forces you to save. So when you have this thought, like I wanna get a better car, you're like, shoot, I can't yeah. get that car yet because I know I need to put that $30,000 installment. And then the third installment's in two years, the final installment when the building gets built. And sometimes that's four years out. Right. But at least you got your foot in the door, Yeah. okay? And then the third way is doing a joint venture, right. okay? That's for a property that's on the market right now. So let's look at a prop, let's think of a property of $800,000. 20% down is 160 plus your closing costs, all that kind of stuff. And if it's in the GTA, if it's in Toronto, you got to pay a double tax. But if it's the first time you're doing it, you can get away from that as well. But let's just say it's uh, closing costs and the down payment, you're at about 190,000. Yeah. Now, you don't, in your 20s, most people don't have $190,000 and the bank of mom and dad might not help, but that's probably the first source I'm going to go to, yeah. see if that bank can help. And if that bank can't, bank can't help, then I'm going to do, I'm going to reach out to other people. Now, to get $190,000, you got to figure it out. It could be you and someone else. You could do it just with one other person. Or maybe it's you and nine other friends. Right. And you guys each come up with 20 Gs, right? And then you, 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 you purchase a property. You own one-tenth of a property, which last time I checked is better than owning zero. Yep. Okay? It goes up in value in five years, just like a, a, a very small passive increase of 5% year over year on that $800,000, that's $40,000 every single year. In five years, that property is gonna be worth over $950,000 right. in and around. Yeah. You can go to the bank, refinance, pull out the equity, pay everyone back, okay? And now I'm going over these numbers quickly. What you everyone here should be doing after this is literally reaching out to Essen, whatever platform you're watching yeah. or listening to, you reach out to Essen and say, Essen, I wanna do what you and Jazz were talking about. Right. And Essen will do, I think you call it like a real estate action plan. Yeah. You'll sit down with them, get a better idea of what they're trying to accomplish. You'll show them how you might be able to help because I know you can't help everyone. Yeah. And then you can kind of go to the next step. Right. But it all starts with having the mindset and you said it, you said it like even better than I could. You said that wherever there's a will, there's a way. Right. Right? right? If you didn't say it, then I made that yeah, up. Yeah, I said they that. They did the same. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and, so, and so if you don't have the mindset that you can do it, you're, you're, you've lost. Yeah. You, there's no way you're going to be able to. 
And I'm not talking about like the fact that I was able to do it and, and, oh, I'm special. At the end of the day, I put my pants on one leg at a time, like everyone else. Okay. But now we're in the like millions upon millions upon millions of people who have bought a property in their twenties and thirties. And they've used one of those types of strategies, bank of mom and dad, you do a joint venture, you do house hacking, or you buy into a pre-construction condo, right? right? There's some other strategies as well i.e. you could do like uh, uh, wholesaling. Yep. And that's essentially you knocking on doors. This is really the way to do it. There's other ways of wholesaling as well. But you knocking on doors and and tying up a property, finding a seller that really needs to sell. You tie up that property. You have it in the offer that you can assign that agreement of purchase and sale to someone else in five days. And then five business days, you tied up the property for 500,000. You now have five days to sell it for 510,000, right. 600,000, whatever that, that spread you can make. That's right. another way of getting it, yeah. right? Another strategy would be what, again, the kids call kind of burst strategy. Essentially it's buying a property, renovating it and refinancing right. it and then repeating it over and over again. But if, that one's slightly tougher because if you don't know the process of renovating, you still need to come up with a down payment. I like the other ways personally, A, because I've seen it work for so many people, but it's an easy and a passive way, especially the pre-construction one. Yeah. That one, I think I like the most because when you're 20 and 30, man, I have cousins and nephews and nieces in that age group. Um, and the stuff that I just hear them talking about sometimes, yeah. the shit that they want to spend their money on, yeah. <laughs> it's it's scary. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, ah, oh, like if you could just... All they need, not that because they're bad or they're not smart, it's because they need something which is called accountability. And, and in that situation, the accountability is the builder's going to keep the rest of the money that you gave if you don't come up with that extra down payment. Yeah, no, it's it's all about education as well. And I'll just share my own personal story about yeah. some of the ideas you gave. This was about two and a half years ago. I was driving in Kingston, Ontario, uh, checking out some properties for a client of mine. And my brother-in-law and I <clears throat> came across a sales center in Kingston, they were selling townhomes for 400,000, um, 20K deposit only. And we walked out of there, signed the contract. We called three of my buddies. We said, let's all put in, you know, 20% combined. Uh, we have three partners right now. We bought a 400,000. Two years later, that property went up to 685. It's come down now to 600,000. But the amount of equity we built, so I could have gone in alone and put in, let's say, 100,000, but I didn't have those capital at the time. So I said, why not get two other guys involved? Let's put in 35 each. And now we're all wealthier because of that. And I don't say that to, to show off or anything. I want to give the 20 year olds or 30 year olds to, an example that honestly, if, if, if I could do it, anybody can do it. And that's, that's the reality of and, it. And you still own this property? Yes, we still own it. Did yeah. you guys refinance it yet or no? Like we're gonna, we're gonna do that soon. Yeah, and, and, we're gonna do that soon. And, yeah. and that's where now the real magic starts. Exactly. That's why exactly. I said earlier that I think real estate is one of the best right. because it's very easy to leverage. Yeah. Because the banks want to give you more money. Yeah. They don't want you to pay off your mortgage right. because then they stop making money. Exactly. And the bank's not a nonprofit organization last time we checked. And so they want to give you more money. So when you go there and say, my property's worth in this situation right now, 600,000, yeah. but you bought it for 400, you put down 20% at that time. So right. 20%, you put down 80. So two, your mortgage is probably in and around $200,000 right now off the top yeah. of my head. Really easy math. <laughs> okay. Um, it's worth, it's worth 600. You have $400,000 yeah. worth of equity. Right. Okay. The bank will give Essen and the rest of the investors 80% of that value. Right. So that's that's 480,000 minus the 200,000 that's left. He's gonna get, and his investors and his partners, I apologize, $280,000. And the best thing about it for us in Canada, it's tax-free. Right. Because you didn't sell anything, there's nobody gonna charge you tax. It's the only way that you get away from paying major taxes, yeah. right? So what I, even though the fact that it went down to 600 SN, I think what people need to understand is this is just a little correction. Exactly. We actually needed it. It's a good thing. Yeah. Overall, it's a good thing. Uh, and again, in my opinion, because 
2020, uh, 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 mid 2020 to about 2022 February. I mean, we were seeing 18 to 22 percent year over year increases. That's insane. Yeah. It's way too much. It was way too fast. Anything that goes up that fast has to come down. And so now we're starting to see a little bit of a normalization of the market. Yeah, values have dipped to 600. I promise you, I'm on. It's why I love the fact that we're recording these things. Is that I can't tell you exactly when, but let's just call it in about five, six years. That thing's yeah. going to be worth way north of 685. Yeah. It's going right back up again because the one thing that most people are not looking at is how many people we have coming into the country. Right. Like if we, we look at this whole room in this whole office, it's the frigging United Nations <laughs> around here. You right. know what I mean? Like we're, everyone's from somewhere else, right. you know? And so, and so with approximately... I think the new number in 2023 is like 486,000 people. Right. I mean, you're going to be looking at 500,000 next year. Where the heck are all these people going to live? Yeah. Like, you, we haven't figured out what Dubai has to, to, to build on the south side of us because of the lake. And then we have in the northern part, we got this green belt legislation. I'm not into cutting down trees and building on our agri. Like, we need to preserve some of the agriculture and all that. Some people have other thoughts around it, but at the end of the day, we don't have really a lot of space to build. It right. looks like we do, especially if you drive on the northern part of our of our of, of southern Ontario. But it's all restricted land, right. and so because of that, values can only do one thing: go back up. Right. They only came down right now because of the. You know, I'm, I'm being careful with the words I'm using here, but um, it like at the end of the day, because Bank of Canada had to increase the rates. Yeah. And they had to increase the rates because of the, all the fake money that we put into the system, right? We printed in the last three years more money than we printed in the last 40 years combined. Right. In three years, we printed more money than we printed in four, 40 years combined. You put all that money into the system. It drops the value of the money. Inflation goes up. And the only way to really bring down inflation now is to increase interest rates. Right. But- the, the Bank of Canada knows that you cannot, cannot really halt the housing industry because it pumps in so much money into the economy. Right. Every time somebody buys or sells a house, it pumps in a little over $152,000 right. into the economy. Right. Real estate fees, like the agents, those are the bigger ones. You have lawyer's fees, yep. you have the Home Depots, the painters, the electricians. It goes on and on. The home yep. inspectors, all that money gets pumped into the economy. And so you, they're not going to keep in, the, they can only increase the rates so much now. Yeah. No, that's, the, I mean, you answered like three of my questions that I had right there. So I think I, if viewers <laughs> and listeners are going to understand that, uh, uh, I like the sound of my own voice sometimes <laughs> no, too. That's brother. awesome. That's um, awesome. I have a lot of passion, <laughs> you know, when it comes to, this 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 vehicle of real estate because yeah. um it's made or it, it it's given the ability for ordinary people to create wealth yeah and i'm not talking like exuberant amounts of billions upon billions of dollars but it's allowed us as ordinary regular people to have a safety net right that Unfortunately, for anybody who's watching, and I know most of your guys and gals are 20 to 30, right. but you also have probably have parents who yeah. now, yeah. okay, are are possibly going to already relying yeah. or going to rely on this pension yeah. fund. Uh, 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 sorry, the 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 um uh, what am I trying to say? The the the, the pension plans that are right. out there from the government, which in my eyes, the 20 and 30 year olds that are listening right now, that's not gonna exist. That's, there's not gonna be any money there when you get there, because we're all going to spend it. Yeah. Right. And so what I think you need to do as a 20 and a 30 year old is you need to protect yourself. Right. And the only way to really, truly protect yourself is by taking accountability yeah. on your own finances. Right. Like financially, you have to take the accountability because unfortunately, and I don't go on government rants or anything, brother, but, and, and nor am I going to go on one here, but the government's not here to save you. Right. They're just not here to save you. In fact, the most terrifying words ever is, hi, we're here from the government and yep. we're here to help you. Right. They're never here to help you. Right. And so it doesn't matter if it's a red government, a blue government, this new reddish orange government that's out there. It doesn't matter. They're not here to help you. 
you have to help yourself. Right. You have to hold yourself accountable. If real estate is the one that you choose, there's 57 different strategies you can use. If it's something else, investing into a business, investing into stocks, like those are all great. Multi, right. multi, multi billionaires have been created through that. Um, it's just, I, I, I'm i so afraid of the, this younger generation um, thinking that the government's here to help right. them because yeah. it's, just, it's, just, it's just not how it works. Yeah. Um, and we need to make sure that guys like you and I, and you're doing like an amazing job at it because you're so consistent with putting out educational content, not only online, like as I was mentioning through your, through your, uh, your events as well, we have to, we have to be the voice. Right. And that doesn't mean that everything I'm saying or essence saying is right, but we can, at, we are bringing people on that have been here yeah. before. Yeah. And I think you made that point about, you know, how to have that mindset. And I always tell people that, you don't need to have a hundred investment properties. You can have, even if you just had one property, you can make a fortune. I gave a story uh, on my social media the other day. I said that my father had a property back in 92 when he first came to Canada. He what bought year? it for, this is 1993. Okay. Um, we came to Canada in 1990. He bought it for about 96,000. In 98, we moved to Markham where he upsized to a detached home for 250,000. And he used to always tell me that I wish I never sold that condo. And so this uh, two years ago, I asked, I said, why did you sell it? You know, cause I was in the industry. I'm like, why would you sell that condo if you, if you could afford it? And he said something that really startled me. He said that my realtor and broker at the time never gave me the idea that I could do that. And so when I heard that, my brain just, I said, I will never do that to somebody I know because I know sales helps us in the industry to get commissions. But for me, if someone can keep a property and if they can build generational wealth because of that, then you're doing yourself a service. And with that, more business will come. But get this though, that property, I looked up the value a couple years ago, went from 100,000 to 500,000. Um, it can rent for 2,500 bucks a month now. I joke, I said that property could have paid off our university bills. <laughs> he laughs about it, but it could have. But regardless, we, we saw that mistake. We haven't done it. Now we've learned from it. But what I'm trying to say is that it could take just one property uh -huh. to make a huge difference for you and your family. It can change right? the course. It, well, you just said it, right? Yeah. It can make a huge difference for your friends, like for your family. And it can also become the ATM yep. that your family can use for the rest of their life. Correct. Meaning that the ATM being, you go to the bank and refinance right. and continue to pull out equity, right? right? Um, but I can't tell you the amount of times I hear from people about, I wish I had, I wish I had kept it. Yeah. I wish I'd kept it. I wish I'd kept it. <laughs> right. Um, but I think it's so important with people like us to, to, to you know, because you, you tell me all the time that you'll walk into sellers' homes and you're talking more about holding on to the property, right. refinancing it, because, and pull back the curtains, right? You said that, like, it's good for us as agents to, when the clients do sell their property because we make a commission, right. but the pulling back of the curtains and full transparency is that, well, if your clients hold on to that one, you help them create wealth. There's right. a good chance that they're going to do it again and 100%. again and again, yep. and then you yep. get paid for that yep. as well, right? And so it is in the best interest of both parties, Absolutely. yourself as the agent as yep. and the client to hold on to these properties yep. as long as possible. Even now, like- I got investment properties that I'm, you know, pumping in a hundred bucks here, 200 yeah. bucks here a month. Um, and I'm okay with that because yeah. I'm like, look, once the rates drop, right. which they will, right. it's just a matter of time, matter of time yeah. right? In fact, the last one was, was a couple of months ago in January 25th, th there was only a quarter percent. Right. And now there's thinking that the next, um, uh, uh, in March, they're probably, um, won't increase it, but be careful. Yeah. Because I trust the Bank of Canada as far as much as as far as I can throw them. Right. You know what I mean? Which is not that far. Yeah. And so just understand that even if they did increase it a little bit, they have to bring it down at some point. Because yeah. of my earlier point, you can't stall the housing industry for that long because yeah. it pumps too much money into the economy. Yeah. Yeah. The GDP is helped by the housing yeah. economy. Yeah. So staying on that subject, like you're very well in touch with the market because you're in it every day. Um, we're in mid-February right now of 2023. What's your gut feel right now as to where the market is? Are you seeing a bit of a transition back into a activity happening? Or Yeah, yeah in certain areas. Yeah. And so what I always advise to people is if you're in the market in terms of investing or looking into buying or possibly selling, then 
it's very prudent to make sure that you look at your local market. Right. Okay. So what you ninety eight percent of the time, what you'll hear in the in the news online and on the in the papers is 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 national. Yep. And then the the furthest that they'll go is like the Toronto news. Right. Okay. But they don't go into the core, like your your actual local market, because within the Toronto market, there is, without any exaggeration, there's a little over 500 micro markets. Right. Because if you look at Toronto and where we're sitting right now, we're at Don Mills and Lawrence. Okay. The market here in Don Mills and Lawrence, literally a kilometer away from us, is there's Bridal Path. Yeah. Our boy Drake lives there, for example. Okay. Right. And then if you go a kilometer, if you go a kilometer east of us, you're in Scarborough, like actual Scarborough. Now go into the downtown area, the harborfront condos is a completely different market than King West. Right. King West is completely different than college. And it goes on and on and on. So to your question, Essen, in terms of am I seeing activity pick up in some markets? Okay. In some areas, like for yeah. example, in Scarborough, last night, because our office is again a kilometer away, two kilometers away. There was a property listed for nine ninety nine. It's a bungalow, separate entrance, basement apartment, listed for nine ninety nine. There was 50, 69 people went to see it in a three day wow. period, okay. four day period. Fifteen offers last night, and yeah. it ended up going for one million one hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. Okay, that's happening all over Scarborough, right? In that market, because for a million one a million, you can't get much. You can't go to Etobicoke and get a million dollar bungalow with a basement apartment. Right. Not happening. You can't get that in East York. You can't get that in most pockets of North York, i.e. like a Young and Finch area, okay? And so now if you look at certain areas just outside of like Toronto proper 416, but in the GTA like Richmond Hill, you start you see more inventory in those areas. Yeah. So the values haven't increased right. as much, right. right? And so what's happening is, is that what we need to do is always look at the local markets. Got it. And, yeah. and so we haven't seen an overall uptick in pricing that's not happened okay but i think what we we're probably i'm gonna say about six to eight months away from that right because i truly feel by fall of this year the interest rates i've gonna are gonna have uh have halted not me meaning that they're not gonna keep going up yeah. we've seen eight increases in a year and a half period right. or whatever right. it's been. Maybe less than a year, actually. Yeah. Yeah, less than a year. Uh, uh, 13 yeah. months to 13 be exact. Months, yeah. 13 months to be exact. We've seen eight uh, uh, upticks in interest rate. What I think we're going to start to see is a leveling off. And then a metric you can't really touch, like that you can't really touch and see on paper is called consumer confidence. What's going to happen is when interest rates and the messaging out there in the headlines is that interest rates are not going up, conversations at home change. Honey... Interest rates haven't gone up again. So maybe we can start looking again. The tenants who got like pushed off the fence, who were right. thinking about buying a year ago, interest rates went up, cost of borrowing got up. They got scared. They rented. Yeah. That's why values for rent jumped up significantly. They're going to come back into the market as well. You're going to get more people looking, less inventory, values go up. Right. This is... This is golden nuggets you're throwing out here, man. I, I wish we had all day. We well, could talk what, all day, I, I've man. I've been doing this for a while, right? So you kind of pick up on yeah. some trends. Like I've seen like 0809, and it's completely different than 0809. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, there was something else that was going on. We, this time around, we're coming off a pandemic. Right. And, 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 and we see, like we've never seen eight increases in, in yeah. mortgages in yeah. this short period of time, right? So it's it's slightly different, but the consumer confidence is the one that I'm always, like I'm always just trying to feel yeah. that, right? Yeah. Like what's going on? And now we are starting to, yeah. in January of 2023, there was 3,000 sales that were done, okay? Right. That's, that's, that's significantly lower yeah. than what we've, seen in the past. Right. However, January is generally a slower, slower month. month. People Correct. are people are, right. are are paying off the credit cards. Right. They got financial hangover from the holidays. We had some very mild weather days, but then we got hit with a week where it was like, I don't know, minus yeah. like a real Canadian, <laughs> like when we were kids, that right. kind of weather, right? And so people don't want to go right. out at that time. Um, where I think in February, when the numbers actually come out, I, I have a feeling that they're going to be higher than they were in January. Now, when you hear in the headlines, and I know I'm going off on 52 different oh, tangents. This is, this is good. <laughs> but when you when you hear in the headlines yeah. that values have come down, 
a certain percentage, sales have come down a right. certain percentage. It's being compared to the best year on record. Right, right. That's a good point. Like that is a good people point, forget yeah. this, right? Yeah. Like you're comparing it to the best year on, on record. record. So yeah. an analogy that I've always used with, with people is that Pretend you're doing a hundred, like imagine yourself right now on the 407. Right. It's kind of where people do this, I guess. <laughs> imagine you're doing 150 kilometers. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty fast. Okay. I don't, don't do that because at 150, that's where they tow away yeah. your car and all that kind of stuff. But let's just say you're doing 150 you, and then you slow down and that's what the market's doing now. And you're doing 120. 120 is still fast. It right. just doesn't feel as fast as 150. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so that's kind of the analogy I like to use. Like we're still chugging along. However, it's just not at the rate and at the speed yeah. that we were a year ago. Okay. No, that's, I mean, Jess, this is really, I got so many questions, but I know you're on a time constraint no, as man, well. No, man, throw some at me. I'm having but fun with you, Essen. I want, I want to talk about yourself a little bit. Um, what are some things you're doing right now um, for other realtors, you know, some sales strategies for people who are in sales. I know I was part of your program and it was a phenomenal program. I think I learned so much. I would say, and I, I truly mean this, one of the best training programs I've ever been a part of. I appreciate that. Because I think what you do best is you're really in tune with the current times. Whereas I feel other people, not to badmouth anybody, everyone's great in their own ways, but you understand today's marketing, today's generation, which a lot of social media why are you so big on that? And yeah, what are some things you're doing right now that, that people can learn about? You know, it's always funny talking about yourself and I always make the joke that I like talking about myself, but it's it, 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 it's always an interesting thing. Um, but in terms of, let me answer your second question first in terms yeah. of social media. Um, I, I came across a word podcast uh, four years ago. Um, I never liked the cameras. I was never really comfortable with really? the cameras. Oh, never. Wow. No, I really wasn't, man. In fact, I came when yeah. I heard the word podcast, yeah. Two things struck me. Number one, it was free. Yeah. You can distribute it to the whole world. It, there's no cost for it. You just need to get a mic. Okay. Um, and being of Indian descent, my mom negotiating over <laughs> apples back home. Like I was like, I like this. I'm, yeah. I'm down for that. Number two, the fact that the word podcast, what it really means is it's an online, uh, uh, sorry, an on-demand radio show. Right. So like your podcast is on Spotify. Yep. You don't have to listen at eight to nine on a Thursday and watch like when yeah, Seinfeld was on. It's on demand. It's on demand, man. Yeah. Go on there, go check it out whenever you want to listen to it. You don't have to listen to the radio at a certain time. Right. So I liked the fact that it was audio. Yeah. That, and, and I'm sure anybody who's listening in their car right now are taking their dog for a walk. They're like, yeah. this guy has a sexy voice. So that's why I did not play. And so um, nobody ever told me that I have a bad voice or good. I was like, I, I've been on phone calls my whole life. I'm comfortable with this. But I love the fact that I don't need to put on a camera. I don't need to have a camera. Um, and that it was free. I can distribute it to the world. And so I just went all in on this podcasting thing. I got a, a big interview with somebody in New York in the real estate business. Yeah. Um, and my team was like, you got to record this on camera. Yeah. If anybody ever goes back to that, it was with Ryan Serhan. Ryan's and you'll notice I never look at the camera. Because okay. I told my team, I was like, I'll put the camera on, but I'm not looking at it. I'm not comfortable right. with it. And so I never looked at it, but a magical thing happened as an, as a marketer and as a sales guy and as a real estate agent, I brought all that footage back, just wanting the audio to go out on the podcast yeah. platform. But my team took it. It was one guy specifically, Steven, he took it, chopped up the video, gave me like five, six clips out of it. I was like, what the heck is this? I was like, where's the full one? Right. He's like, Jazz, don't worry. The full one went on YouTube, but put these five, six on Instagram and Facebook. Right. And I was like, just as like clips. He's like, yeah, just put them on clips. This will feed people to go to your full. I did that. I started to notice people were my, there were more people were watching my small clips because right. they, you know, we have that in us a little, we want the quick little one minute yeah, hits. Yeah, yeah. But then the people who wanted to know more, they went to the full. Yeah. And ever since that day, once I saw the magic of what happens when you're on camp, like once you record something on camera, I was like, e this is awesome. Yeah. Just let's record on camera. And I've done that ever for, for the last four years. People, specifically real estate agents were like, dude, why do I see like 10 pieces of content a day from you? Like, how do you do that? I told them exactly everything to do. Like just here, like here's actually the whole model. You record it, you chop it up, you can get, pictures, you can get the written word, you can turn it into a blog, take it. Then they would come back six months and say, and I would just be in conversation. I'm like, Hey man, like I remember talking to you six months ago, like, well, how's that going? And like, I didn't do any of it. 
They're like, who do I hire? Like, can I borrow your people? I'm like, you can't really borrow my people <laughs> because like they're yeah. working for me full time. Yeah. But man, I got slapped in the face with it so many times being kind of an entrepreneur and having that in my blood, I was like, maybe there's a business here. Right. Like, And then I started telling people like, I, I could do this for you. God, like, I just loved the first person that I did it with. She was on yeah. our team, um, and 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 she was kind of the guinea pig that we that that we started with, and she kind of let us, you know, test and try things. Um, and now, nineteen months later, myself and a business partner, Laura Stewart, who I think has been on your podcast, yes, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, Hands down, I'm way better than her. And your viewers and <laughs> listeners will tell us that. Um, her and I started this company from the ground up that actually produces content for agents. Right. What happened six months ago, I had agents say, look, I love your media stuff, okay? We're down. Someone like US and we were doing it. Yeah. But can you talk to us about like, what do you do with, like, how do you reach out to your clients? Yeah. Can you tell us what you, how do you put on these events, like educational events? How do you, how do you uh, 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 build a team? Yeah. Like I have 60 agents, I have 15 support staff. Again, same thing. I'm telling them what to do. They come back, they're like, I haven't done shit. I'm like, okay, maybe we do a little program for you where I give you everything for 10 days. I I, I always say the best way to learn a new language is go to the country and spend time there because right. you're immersing yourself. So we call it the immersion program. You come here at this table that you and I are sitting at. It's usually done for about eight to 10 people. It's very intimate, right. 30 hours over 10 days. And that's where you pick up all my, all my processes, my systems. We actually hold your hand and say, shoot a video, right. which is probably my favorite thing because day one, everyone's like, yeah. like shaking. I was there, man. You were there, you know, I they're shaking that, yeah. and they don't want to hold the camera. And yeah. day 10, they're like, and yeah. they're just yippity yappity on right. the camera. Like, so you see this progression in such a short period of time um, because I think you need to find ways, in my opinion, to help people in a short period yep. of time um, because you don't have... 10 years to work with people, right? right? right. So I, 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 because I'm in the business, I can, I know like, okay, Essen, don't do that. Cause right. I did that 17 times and it never worked. So don't even try it. Right. Essen, I tried this six times out of the six times, five times it worked. Just do this. I can cut to the chase pretty quickly. I think that's kind of my, my, my skill set where that lies to your point about being in the market. Yeah. And I know some of the top coaches in the, in, in like in, in North America, amazing people. Right. They're just not in the business anymore, right. right? So it's a little different. Like when you're telling somebody, don't worry, just keep pushing and keep calling or yeah. keep doing this. Right. It's one thing to say it, but when it's coming from me, I just made those calls. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that, I know how tough it is. And I know also what's working well. So um, that's the immersion program, brother. Yeah, no, I think that wraps it up perfectly because the first thing you said was the ROI in yourself. Mm -hmm. So by joining these programs, you're basically putting an investment into yourself. And that I believe real estate stocks, whatever, that's going to give you the best rate of return if you invest in yourself. So that, that was a pretty good. Uh, sorry. Like you brought that around that was full pretty circle. well. Yeah. Like, that was pretty good. That, that was pretty thank good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So that wraps up the real estate questions. But as Nick knows, I'm not sure if you know, we always ask a few fun questions to wrap it up. So I'm going to ask right, you, let's put do you it on up. the spot a little bit. Tell me what is your favorite movie you've ever watched? I think I know this, but all it's, time favorite yeah. movie, hands down, is Scarface. Really? Hands okay. down. Okay. Hands All down right. is Scarface. I'm going to say Godfather, but Scarface. Okay. So, All right. <laughs> it's funny you said that. Like, if you, yeah. get, if you said, give me your two favorite movies, it would yeah, be yeah. Scarface and Godfather. Okay. It would yeah, be. Al Pacino. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all Al Pacino. <laughs> Godfather, I mean, now that you say, like, it's hard to compete yeah, against because yeah. you get Al Pacino and you get Robert De Niro, right. so you get both. Yeah. But there's just something. Uh, Scarface is the movie that, um, if you put it on, it's probably been 712 right. times I've watched it. I'll say all the lines in the movie, right? Okay. With Godfather, because <laughs> of Godfather 3, it got yeah. tapered off. Like, yeah, Godfather, yeah, yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> they should have just stopped at two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, that's good. Question number two, we saw LeBron break Kareem's record. So I'm going to put you on the spot. The GOAT debate, LeBron or Jordan? Or Kareem, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, look, for me, I have a massive affinity for Kobe. Yeah. I'm all okay, about Kobe. Kobe. I right. throw him in there. Yeah. Now, I'm smart enough and I've been watching sports and watching basketball long enough. I can see why you, why most people wouldn't call Kobe the GOAT. Um, out of the two, I, I just think there's nobody who transcended the sport. There's nobody who made people play the game of basketball more than Michael Jordan. Right. And, and, and maybe because I'm a, I'm a sales guy. And so I like the fact of leading and put, bringing people together and making people that much better, which LeBron does a great job at, yeah. but 
there's this one thing of LeBron that's always been kind of a pet peeve yep. is the fact that he gives away the ball in right. that last six, seven seconds. Right. And for me, I just love that Kobe. Yep. And, and Kobe's a complete disciple of, of Jordan. Of Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just like the fact that six seconds left in the game, you know who's getting the ball right. and he wants the ball and he, at a very high efficiency, yeah. closed the game off well. Right. Yeah, what I, are you gonna I, say I to think that? I'm on the same page with oh, you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a Jordan guy. I saw both players uh, in their primes. Yeah. Jo LeBron more because I was in high school when he came. But Jordan, that run with the six championships, I was 10 or 11 years old. Like that's what got me into the game, actually. That's why I love basketball so much. But I will say that for me, the litmus test, and it might be an unfair question, but I will say if game seven, Games on the line, championship. Yes, are you going to take LeBron for the shot or are you going to take Jordan for a shot? And who do you want for the whole game of game seven even? You know what well, I mean? Like, yeah, for the, yeah, I still yeah. even want Jordan because some people would say, yeah. yeah, but LeBron can pass it off. And, yeah, yeah. and full, like, you know, full disclosure, yeah. I think LeBron is probably number two, yeah. right? I What he's done is unbelievable. Right. I don't know how long it's going to, it'll be interesting to see if somebody breaks this record quicker than he, you know, broke uh, 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 Kareem's. Yeah because of the three point and everyone right. now is a three point specialist kind right. of thing. Um, but man, what Jordan, uh, sorry, LeBron's been able to do in 20 years. Right. It's unbelievable. Yeah, the longevity. Uh, longevity and you know, one thing with him is very rare does somebody come out with the expectations that they had yeah. and live up to them. Absolutely. That was what, Absolutely. was it 18? Yeah. Like when he was on yeah. the cover of Sports Illustrated right, called right. The King? Yeah, since high school, like that's unbelievable. No, right. you've never heard of LeBron like in 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 personal troubles yeah no controversies no yeah. controversies stayed a cool head right. built this i promise school yeah. like really like it's unbelievable what he did and jordan actually will also say it too which you got to give some respect to which they're different eras too yeah. right so it's hard to compare but again yeah. game yeah. seven on the line <laughs> i want michael jordan. i want jordan yeah. I lebron would jordan. make the pass jordan yes. would take the shot I, that's how it would be yeah. and jordan's gonna say get out of my way exactly just get out exactly. of my way give me the ball <laughs> last two questions uh you're Super Bowl pick for Sunday. Who do you got? Well, I, I have no choice. I there's no. I, I'm a I'm a hardcore Dallas Cowboys. Fan. Right. And so there's like I wouldn't even utter the words of that other team <laughs> that's playing. Okay. Um. Let alone wish that yeah. they win. Great team. I would love their quarterback, by the way. Um. But uh, I I I do actually think they're gonna win. Okay. That green team. Okay. Um. Right. But I do wish uh, Kansas City yep. actually takes it because right. I like Mahomes. I, he's yeah. he's this he's this new generation of player. Like yeah. you never know what's gonna come out of this guy. Like yeah. these sidearm throws he does, which is kind of cool. Um, but I just think that he's not 100% healthy yeah. and the other team is 100% healthy. Just say it, man. Feel it. <laughs> You're wearing green, so. I know. I'm wearing green because of our boy, our D'Souza there. But oh, um, yeah, those are the Eagles. Yeah. All right, all right. He anyways, said it, he said it. Anyways, yeah. Um, just to, to wrap it up, what's the best piece of advice someone has ever given you that's resonated till this day for you? Um, believe in yourself. Okay. Like it's, I got, I, I have so many mentors. There's like, I'm such an accumulation of so many people. I think that's the right word. Um, but it wasn't until a mentor of mine who's, who's passed away now, um, who said like, you truly just need to believe in yourself because yeah. you, you're enough. Yeah. And, and you, in t it wasn't until that day where up until that day, let me say, I always doubted myself. Mm. Like maybe money, like, you know, doesn't grow on trees and, and maybe you can't be wealthy. Maybe you shouldn't, you're not going to have a team. Maybe you're not going to be able to achieve all these dreams. Yeah. And once I heard like, he really just, he caught, he's probably said it to me 612 times, right. but it was the one time he said it literally weeks before he passed away. Right. Um, and that's when it was, it just clicked. And I was like, you know, I'm ready. And so when he did pass away, he was, um, he was actually the face. Like you probably would have been doing the podcast with him yeah. and yeah. you should have. Yeah. He was amazing, a beautiful soul, yeah. full of charisma. Um, and I was happy with the role that I had. It was, right. it was just supposed to be. Um, but when he passed away, I was able to pick up on the torch, pick up the torch and right. run with it quite quickly because I was already starting to believe in myself. Right. So right. you got to just believe in yourself. Yeah. No, I think that that's 
an amazing way to put an end to the podcast. Um, Jess, I want to thank you so much for your time. You've been a mentor for me as well, all these uh, months so far. And uh, I really hope we can do a part two one, one day as well, if you want to come back. Buddy, all day. I, I'm more than happy. I, I love the fact that like, you. your progression has been awesome, buddy. No, so thank congratulations. You. Thank again. you so much. If you guys are listening, uh, just a quick reminder, just please uh, like, share, and subscribe to the audio and to the YouTube channel. It gets more viewers out there. And if you have any questions about real estate in general, please give me a shout. We're going to put Jass's content information in the in, below as well. So if you want to reach out, join his program, by all means, give him a shout as well. And I'm sure you're going to have a phenomenal time. Thank you so much, guys. See you on the next episode.